Oh my goodness, but she sounds exactly the same. <gasps> I mean, I'm not saying that she sounds worse, but she sounds identical. Oh my goodness me, this is just so fantastic. Kia ora and welcome. My name's Zoe Stibi and I'm a vocal coach who teaches you how to sing with more confidence and security. And if you're interested in doing so, check out link in the description below because my online Singing School The Vocal Academy is accepting new students. In today's video, Natalie Imbruglia, she taught everybody to sing like an indie superstar. Let's up see what she's doing with Torn. Love this song. It's deceptively hard to sing. I just have to say that to you now. goodness but she sounds exactly the same we had a look at Christina Aguilar and she sounds complete I think even better but oh, I mean I'm not saying that she sounds worse but she sounds identical this is crazy let's look at that again this really typical Natalie and Brulia sound was like, I thought I saw a man brought to life. We've got a high larynx position there, thicker vocal folds, but a little bit, what I think is a little bit of tightening at the back of the tongue or at the back of the throat. We're never really too sure, but that's creating that sort of brighter sound that she's got going on and making it sound, well, like Natalie and Brulia. Let's just watch this. Well, you couldn't be that man. To know, seem to care that your heart is full. Well, I don't know him anymore. There's nothing where I used to lie. My conversation has gone dry. Well, that's what's going on. Nothing's fine at all. I'm all out of faith. Oh, goodness me, I love it. And there's a little bit of our modification in there as well for us to have a look at. So we've got this. Uh, when we go into the chorus, I couldn't be the man I adored. She's not allowing the larynx to go down with the pitch, which I'm not saying that's good or that's bad. That's just a, a style decision. So if you were to let the, the larynx go down, I couldn't be the man I adored. So we want to be able to do both and not just make one or the other as our sort of like main decision. Um, that's a little bit about cross training. I'm not saying that Natalie needs to change her sound whatsoever. Yeah. And you saw what's what's going on because when we're going into that higher chest voice sound or even slight tending towards the belt we need to open up the mouth and that's going to modify the vowels slightly so that's what's going on so we've gone into the uh kind of sound she's taken the microphone away because as we do that the sound is going to automatically come across as being louder well, that's what's going on. She's having like the most fun ever. Oh. We're gonna have another look, a little look at this chorus, okay? Because we are hearing quite a decent amount of twang going, Nothing's fine, I'm torn, I'm my line of faith. 
I don't remember this though in the original being quite this tight in the chorus section. So if you do want me to have a little bit of a look at a before and after of Natalie's version of Torn, then let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. So much happens as we get older with our voices. Not saying it's a bad thing. That's just what happens. Our voices actually tend to get darker as we get older, just due to the gravity and the larynx kind of dropping down. Let's have a look at this chorus. And again, that's a little bit of this vowel modification guy. Torn, torn. Usually we're going to a torn, and she's going torn. I'm all out of faith. And that little bit of vowel modification is, is well going to help us to stay on these thicker vocal folds. Oh my goodness me, this is just so fantastic. Firstly though, these two women that are standing there like filming themselves singing, this is like this new phenomenon. I saw this at a couple of concerts recently. Like, what the fuck? What are you doing? And also turn your phones off, like enjoy the performance. Natalie Imbruglia is standing in front of you singing her biggest hit of like all time. Just like put the phone down and enjoy the moment people. You can watch it on fucking YouTube, yeah? Anyway, sorry, rant over. I hate phones at concerts. So when we've got this, we're going into this, this, uh, what have we got, the second verse there? Going into the second verse, well, I guess the fortune teller's right. Again, the same idea of the speaking on pitch, really. It's quite a straight tone. There's not a lot of vibrato in the sound. So this style of music came out of this almost going against that sort of factory pop girl band boy band kind of sound we focused less on the singing and we were focusing more on the storytelling that was going on and so singers like Meredith Brooks uh Natalie Imbruglia but also Nelly Furtado talking about in the late 90s um they were all coming out in this this indie style of singing again fo taking the focus right right away from the vocal fireworks Okay, so before she gets into the audience participation sections, we're gonna, nothing's fine, I'm torn. I said at the beginning, this song is deceptively high, okay? Deceptively hard to sing. Although we don't have a lot, a lot of modulation in the melody, which makes it an excellent song to practice your chest voice. Yeah, we're up on the B flat four. So this is sitting right on the passaggio of most female chest voices. So I would say if you are working on this song in order to find your chest voice, then take it down at least three semitones, which might actually make the first verse a little bit challenging for you. So if the, your chest voice is something that you're wanting to work on, check out the link in the description below for firstly my free singing lesson, as well as my online singing school, The Vocal Academy, because that is where we start. The chest voice is the foundation for your singing so we need a we need a really great vocal for contact further down the range so when we're talking about nothing's fine on time you might feel like you're yelling a little bit and that's not what we want so we want to focus a little bit more on the cry taking the volume out of the sound you'll notice that actually for the whole song she's quite close to the microphone signaling to us that the, the volume's not actually changing that much <laughs> Can 
they lay naked on the floor. She's kind of not really taking that depth down to those lower notes, which is why they're going, now nah, you're naked on the floor. And that's what happens when we don't take the larynx down. Now, please, I'm not saying that I'm trying to give Natalie a fucking singing lesson. Look, she's a mega star. Like, she can do whatever the fuck she wants. You can do whatever you want. But if you are struggling with those lower notes, then that's what you can work on, okay? So important. It's like, it's up to you what you do with your actual singing voice. In the end, I want you to be able to go make that decision and not be like oh I have to do this because I can't do it any other way so we notice there that she's not actually getting louder in as the song is going on not a problem you can see there though that the energy is increasing in her movement as she's moving around the stage she's bringing the energy in without pushing with the voice and that's just one way that we can bring that energy in rather than thinking that the song just has to get louder and louder and louder and louder as we keep going got the oh yes and all that sort of stuff we're going to have a little look at that I don't like to stop in the middle of those guitar solos there although that was it's not the most difficult guitar solo on the planet and that's not what it's about I keep saying that it's not about creating fireworks in your song you do you as an artist I think that's one of the things that really holds people back when they feel like they have to do this and this and riffing and they have to you know modulate and all this sort of shit so one of the things as well about keeping this chest voice sound further up in the range, we also have to think about where the singer is from and what their natural setup is for their accent, okay? I'm getting to the point. When we think about Natalie and Brulia, she's from Australia, isn't she? Yes, she's Australian British. So I'm from New Zealand and you might notice I don't speak with a super strong New Zealand accent. That's a lot to do with my singing background um, and also because my parents actually come from Wales, but I was born and bred in New Zealand. So I never really grew up with a full on New Zealand accent. A New Zealand accent would be like more back down here where the tongue position has gone down and it's not as forward as my accent is now. Whereas I sound to a lot of New Zealanders a little bit more Australian. And Australians tend to have that little, that increase in the twang, that high forward tongue position, and that, yeah, g'day, mate, eh, I'm not trying to make fun, but that air eh, sound is perfect for belting and perfect for creating a better chest voice quality and being able, because the, they spend a lot of the time speaking up there, it's really, really, really well trained at that part of the range. If you've ever been to Australia, it's feels a lot louder than, for example, in New Zealand. And this could also be said, for example, I live very close to Italy. When you go to Italy, it's all here, up here. And again, very belted, high forward tongue position, bright sound and a little bit of twang coming into the natural accent. As opposed to, for example, London, where it tends to be a little bit back down here, where the tongue goes a little bit further back. And in a lot of the time, some London accents have twang, but some do not. So I know that Adele's from London. I'm not saying that this is particularly like a blanket for everybody, but I want you to think a little bit about the natural setup of your accent and what that is. So someone, for example, from California is going to find it a lot easier to belt and to get that higher chest voice sound than, for example, someone from Germany, where it tends to be a little bit further back with the vowels and that whole sound sitting back in the throat with the lowered tongue position. 
So don't kind of think like, oh no, I come from the wrong country. It's like all hard. It just means that it's going to take a little bit of time for us to build up the strength in the tongue in order to bring it further forward in the mouth. And that is something that I will help you with in the Vocal Academy because we need to go through it step by step and really bring the tongue further forward before we can start working on that twang. I feel it was a very long-winded explanation, but I didn't want to be like rude or come across as racist in any type of way, where you come from really makes a difference as to how easy this comes to you. Goodness me, I'm just so happy for her that she's decided to make a comeback with her music. Um, she's just the most amazing artist and I cannot even imagine how difficult it is after stepping away and coming back again into this completely different world of music because I feel like at the moment it's sort of like every single year we're changing at quite a rapid pace. You notice there at the end, stylistically very, very different um, I'm only like really into the 90s music at the moment because I'm planning a student concert all based around 90s music. So at the moment, this is very, very present for me. We're going to be performing in December. And so what we've been looking at is these differences in the styles of music between what's coming out now and what was in the 90s. And a lot of my students are saying to me like, oh, this is so boring at the end of it which is really interesting to note that you notice that outro we only had in the guitar so it's dun, 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 ba, dun, dun. so really it was quite repetitive and that was very normal in the 90s to have sort of like three or four utterances of the same chorus just kind of like rolling out at the end of the song not saying that that's good. I'm not saying that that's bad. It's just really interesting to note that that doesn't really happen in music that's coming out now. We tend to sort of like either sneak in an extra verse or we lay in an extra bridge or even a slightly longer instrumental rather than just doing that simple repetition of loads and loads of chorus at the end. I just think that's quite cool in terms of the way that music is changing as time goes on. Well, Natalie's amazing. Let me know down in the comments if you struggle with that song actually. And if that's something that you're interested in learning a little bit more about how to sing like Natalie. If you've enjoyed this video, I haven't looked at her on the channel before, but I would really recommend that you take a look at this video up here. Very, very similar in the style. And if you want to learn to sing with more confidence and control and be able to capture your chest voice to sing it, or to use it higher in the range, then check out the link in the description below because that is a class I have available for you in the Vocal Academy. Have an awesome rest of the day. Anyone can learn to sing. I'm here to help you. Well, I'm here to give you the tools <laughs> to teach you how to use your voice in a way that you want to use it. You're just awesome. I just wanted to let you know that. Kaki channel.